Hmm, I wonder if I actually need a 4K texture here. Oh, thank you Magic Texture. What this texture is doing is basically showing you which texture size a real thinks will be the perfect fit for the surface it is rendering, given the match UVs, viewport resolution and position of the camera. I bet you can see how a tool like this can play a key role in making sure you have full control over your project, by removing the guesswork we usually do about how big a texture really needs to be during an optimization pass of the game. If you think it will be useful to you, just follow the link in the description or have a look on my Patreon to get it. Of course, magic doesn't exist, even in the cart, sorry. This texture doesn't have anything different from any other one you daily use. What allows it to change its content in relation to the resolution it has on the screen is the fact that I customized its MIP maps. The MIPs are nothing more than what LODs are for meshes, a sequence of lighter and lighter versions of the same texture. What makes them kind of obscure is the fact that normally we have not a clear visualization and control over them. In an usual pipeline, they don't exist until a texture is important into an engine, where they are automatically generated and, to be honest, for 99% of the cases, this is perfectly fine. In a real engine, we can visualize them by checking this box and selecting the index of the desired MIP. As you can see, each MIP consists in a half-sized version of the previous one. As far as the control is concerned, we can set a MIP bias to the texture to impose the higher resolution MIPs to never be rendered. This is useful when you realize your texture is too big compared to what you use it for, so instead of reimporting it with a lower resolution, you can use this to virtually scale it down. It's important to notice that this is a real optimization you do in your game, since once you ship, the building process will scrap all the unused higher levels. Another thing we can do is to change the algorithms for the generation of the MIPS, or decide if you want them at all. Well, how do you gain total control over the MIP maps? To do that, you have to work with the DDS image file extension, which is one that essentially no software house has bothered supporting in a meaningful way. And with that comes the extreme frustration you get when trying to figure out this stuff by yourself. Photoshop doesn't support it by default. GIMP does, but aside from saving a DDS file, I wasn't able to figure out how to work with it. Same for Substance Designer and what about the dedicated tool of the company that created the format itself, Microsoft? Let's not even talk about it. At the end, the only thing that works is the NVIDIA plugin for Photoshop, link to the load in the description. Let's have a look to how a texture with MIP maps looks. As you can see, all the levels of detail are laid out one after another in an image that is actually bigger than the resolution we assigned it. With each step, we divide by two the texture size until we reach a one by one image. And if you ever wondered why do we have to use texture sizes that are a power of two, this gives you an answer, because otherwise it wouldn't be possible to keep halving them down to this resolution. Well, now that you see the texture like this, I imagine that you already have figured out how I made the one I showed you earlier. You have to first create an image for every level of detail you want. Then, you create a new file and you set the height to the resolution of the texture you want to create and the width to its double minus one. After that, you import all your images and you lay them out as you saw a moment ago. You go to save the file, select the DDS format and... Apparently this is too much for my old 980 Ti, so first make sure to have newer hardware than mine. Luckily a friend of mine was able to save this file for me, but for this tutorial I'll go with a smaller texture so I can show you what comes next. So you go and save it and this prompt pops out. You select the BGRX or the BGRA format, depending on if your texture has an alpha channel or not. You uncheck regenerate MIP maps, but you check the box above. You crank this number to the maximum it allows you, or until you don't see the size of the texture you desire down here. Select the highest compression quality because why not, and save your file. And you're done. Now just import your texture in Unreal and it will automatically work.
just be sure to uncheck the virtual texture thing, for some reason it imports it like one. At the end of the day, this is a very basic use of a texture with custom myth maps. I personally think they have a lot more unexpressed potential, don't you think? Actually, has any cool idea sparkled into your mind yet? Let's discuss it in the comments and maybe they will be the topic of a future video.